I'm good. You're bad. Ooh, it feels good to fight you. It's like totally I have true. to like spend all my time and it's totally gone like bananas in the last like six years. It's like, how much can I make myself feel good with this dopamine hit like a rat? Like getting my That's little hits totally off of fucking with someone else. That's totally <laughs> it's like, true. ooh, I hate you. Yep. Like, and so then your day becomes about, let me go on like the news and go on the feeds and see who I can be mad at today. <laughs> <laughs> who are you gonna I fuck need to with? feel good. Let's go find someone to hate. Yeah. Coming all the way from Minneapolis to Washington, D.C., we now bring you Enter the Freud. Warning! This content is for entertainment purposes only. It is not medical advice. Do not take anything we say seriously, for goodness sakes. 2021, COVID's ending, and we have this atmosphere in our country that's like super highly charged, especially when you're looking at social media or Facebook or whatever, CNN news, it's like there's like this atmosphere highly charged but here we are in washington dc looking around there's all these people and it's kind of what i'm what i'm struck with right now and then i realize is so cool about america is like there's all of these different people from different cultures they look different they have different values and as i'm standing here right now different than when i'm at home doing my thing swiping on my uh, social media thing right now i'm struck by wow we're so different and it's almost like a miracle we can get along and maybe humans, like, for the hundreds of thousands of years that humans were living on planet Earth, they didn't get together with people different than them, and they didn't have to get along. And now America's this crazy experiment of all of these different people. I mean, look at how different here everyone is here. And we don't get along that well, but, like, nobody's killing each other right now. And so it's right. kind of amazing that we're all getting along. I think the rule is, though, that you have to not say anything or do anything. <laughs> right. You're just like, you can exist. We together. can stand here and look nice. Yes. And keep our distance. Yes. And then we can get along. And have a common cause of, you know, taking your pictures and looking cute and looking at everyone else. But you don't have <laughs> as, to hear. As long as we're just taking selfies and yeah. there's a nice sunset, then we can get yes. along. But if we're to actually talk about something like which color lipstick is better, then we might start punching each other. That or we're in the land of dysfunction. I mean, honestly. Like, what do you mean? We're in D.C. where no one gets along for any amount of time for too long. I mean, you go drink together and you get along. But when it comes down to brass tacks and trying to figure out what direction people are going to go, you know, culturally, politically or whatever, socially, it starts to diverge quickly. Yeah, that's true. So you know, what an apt place to be than D.C. Right, well, because... To what, discuss. D so D.C. is the symbolic and, and um, literal center of the government. And so what a government is, is where all the humans get together in a big group and decide, okay, collectively, what are we going to do together? Let's, let's come together and decide what we're going to do. Let's all pool our money and build roads. Let's pool our money and create a military and go attack other countries, right? That's what the government is. And... That, that's what you're saying is that we Americans can't collectively get together and agree on anything. And no, when we try to do that, we start screaming at each other. Well, you started with, let's pool our money. Some of us did not agree to pool our money. <laughs> right, some people are, no, let's not pool our money. <laughs> no, and some people say, no, you're gonna pool your money. Yeah, and then we're, and we're gonna, gonna take it from out of your paycheck and we're gonna pool yes. it. And then we're gonna decide how yes. to spend it. And not only that, are we gonna tell you through the how we're spending your money, what your values are based on those things that we're spending our money on. And so when you start to get at, do we all have the same values and the same more or less moral compass, then we start to No, because we don't have the same values. Right. And then again, I'm it's when you stand here and look at all these people, it's like, well, no wonder we don't have the same values. Those people versus those people, like, of course they don't have the same values. Right. And, and I is, really like these girls. I <laughs> say. <laughs> and those girls don't have the same values as those guys. But those guys like those girls' values a lot. <laughs> uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, you know, as long as, you know, their parents aren't involved. Um, but so it's, when, when you stand here and look at the diversity, it's no wonder we can't all agree on how we pool our money or what we spend our money on. Yeah. And then fights, again, back to, especially during COVID, we're all kind of like, locked away in our little bubble, fearing everyone else because everyone else has a virus that's going to infect me. So if I, uh, if I 
talk to anyone or see anyone without a mask, I'll die. So that fear gets amped up. And so then in, during the time of COVID, there starts to be this increasing distrust of other people. And so then I'm just on my Instagram thing, like looking or Facebook or uh, whatever news. And it starts to be like, I fucking hate those people. That person's stupid. The president's stupid. This person is stupid. And this atmosphere of like not getting along has been like building. Yeah, yeah. It, it spills out into everyday life. Like right now it's fine because nobody's talking to each other. Nobody's engaging. But if you think about, you know, like this group of high schoolers, I'm assuming it's a problem of some sort. But, you know, it's like I see a lot of bodycon dresses over there and like super tight stuff. Like there's some people on the internet that are gonna be like, oh, they're terrible. Those are the destruction of the country. Oh, the people on the internet. Wait, if, yeah. when, when, these, when these women are featured yeah. on YouTube, then, then there's people gonna leave comments like, those stupid bitches. Yeah. I hate those bitches. <laughs> yeah. And then there's like, I don't know, I'm trying to pick out another group of people. The, the hatred. <laughs> it's like people can find anything to hate. Yeah, you know, I, I, told you the other day like if you don't have an enemy you have to make one there's one there's several there's some more <laughs> you know like who are we gonna be mad at today who don't we align with who's gonna take the country in the wrong direction right like yeah, yeah. who are the good people who are the bad people who's the in group who's the out group you know and at any given time that changes and any maybe medium right so you're talking about covid and you know in this time when everything's hyper concentrated like our focus is on like we're not thinking about like what is good what's going to happen next like what can we do that's like going to make the world a better place we're like no how do we do that by making you bad you bad you're like the show of like our that our country is going down the yeah, garbage yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know like what i mean i really like this but um you really like this scene? You keep yeah. looking over at those prom people. So really <laughs> you like, like their values. I really like them. Okay, but hold on, let me... Oh wait, there's a Trump sign up there. That's yeah, yeah, great. Of course. <laughs> okay, so let me speak to this. Uh, w w repeat that thing about the enemy. If you don't have an enemy, find one. You have to make one. Yeah, yeah, okay. So there, yeah, there's, there's a psychology thing to that, that um, I feel like uh, looking at that, there's like these psychological currents behind all this that's really important. Uh, your average Joe doesn't look at this but when i when i hear that and when i see this i think of the psychology behind that so the second this enemy psychology um carl jung called that shadow projection and the idea is that all humans we're sort of a mix of all different qualities good and bad happy sad angry uh, sometimes i'm generous sometimes i'm selfish sometimes i'm prudent sometimes i'm impulsive sometimes i'm kind sometimes i'm, I'm an asshole and everyone every human is a mix of those but as you're growing up as a little kid, your mom scolds you when you're selfish, or your dad gets mad at you when you uh, were too impulsive. And, and it's pretty intense when you're three and like you do something wrong and it makes your mom mad, it like rattles you deep as a little three-year-old. Um, and so what happens is your, as your psychology forms, you start to learn to try to be like, I'm not bad and I'm not impulsive. And you do these things that's like, I'm not that. And Carl Jung called that the shadow, the parts of me that I don't want to be, so I start to try to not be them. And eventually I decide I'm not those things. I'm a good boy. David's a good boy. I'm good. And so that this false self-concept forms, and Carl Jung calls that the persona. It's like who I want to be and who I present. And then the shadow is these parts of me that I am, but I don't want to be and I pretend I'm not. And the problem comes that for some reason in our psychology, what we do is this thing Carl Jung called shadow projection, which is we find someone else that we decide are those bad things. Look at that person. The way that they're taking care of their kid isn't good. They're bad. Yeah. And, and for some reason that makes me feel better. Like, I'm good because they're bad. So this thing happens, shadow projection, which I think is the root of all of this stuff we're talking about. It's the root of racism. It's the root of like the rageful cancel cultural stuff we see. It's just like hatred of someone else ultimately is this psychological thing. This is just designed to make me feel better. Those people are bad. I'm good and it kind of makes me feel better. And then I try to like align with good people and we're good and those people are bad. And then the worst part comes is, well, in those bad people, we need to like, do something about it yeah. and get rid of the bad thing. Yeah.
And that fucking psychology is so powerful. You know, I listened to a podcast once because I'm always listening to podcasts that are not this one, but you know, whatever. Um, but it was about more or less about the rise of a mono god, right? Like, so there's only one god yeah, yeah, as opposed right. to like multi deities. And the reason is, and I think about it in, in what you were saying, is that if you get start to get too many people together, right? You have to try to figure out how are we going to get all these like disparate people together to like go on the same page? And so what you do is mix that what you were just talking yeah. about, but bring it on a mass scale and say, okay, how do we create something where we can get as many people onto the same page of like a more or less moral ground so yeah. that we can, you know, have an in-group and out-group and we're like the good people yeah. that know yeah. and we're going to help each other and be in like community with each other, but we have to kind of create the rules and who's not in that right and so then to kind of fulfill what you're saying i think is like individually we're like well i'm good i'm part of the group like because i'm following the group rules yeah. right kind of like yeah. the mom tells yeah. me yeah. and like those people aren't following our group yeah. rules so they're like terrible bad people and so we need to like come up with like a structure like be it a god that will punish them or a social structure that will punish them yeah. or like exclusion or whatever that turns out to be yeah. so that those people are not going to be threats to our perceived sense of good totally. and right. moral rightness right? right and and so um you know it just becomes and what happens when you have like a giant culture like america or not a culture but a giant country like america uh -huh. right and so now we have all these people. How do you know who's in and who's out? Like, <laughs> who's the like, who's the decider of like, you know? Who's in your in group? Who's the good moral right. people? Right, is it like a religious group? Is it a like racial group? Is it a like? Well, it's, I, it sort of feels like what it used to be was like a, a race, like, oh, I'm white, I look white, I have bl blonde hair and blue eyes, so th that, you know? And then, okay, maybe as it advanced, it starts to be like my nationality, or it starts to be like uh, my religion, religion has been a big one. And now in America, it's like the biggest thing starts to be like my political party. Yes. Right, political party has been a big one. But even th then it's kind of, <laughs> like with COVID, it's kind of like, are you a masker or a not masker? Are you a vaxxer or anti-vaxxer? Yeah. And so it starts to be ideological things. And then it, and then that's why these like um, intense ideological things, and, and you can feel the anger of the maskers to the anti-maskers and the anti-maskers to the maskers. It's like that same primitive anger back of like when people were killing each other. It's that same primitive thing. Right, and I think what's interesting is in our time, we're seeing like a convergence of, are you well, anti-mask, mass, are you good woman, bad woman, good man, bad man? You know, all the good, good, good and bad dichotomy is like, we just pick them and like, whatever it is. And what's interesting about the mask thing, it's like, that particular group, I don't even know, is it like aligned? I think at this point it is aligned on a political line, right? Like this group has decided like, we need something to coalesce all these disparate groups of people. So it will be like, we'll be the pro-maskers, the pro very narrow type of whatever a woman is. We'll be a pro and we'll pick all these things and try to like hodgepodge this group together that really doesn't align very much on anything else. But you try to like put it under this umbrella of a bunch of shit, right? And then these people are like, let's go over here and we'll get together this hodgepodge of fucking things that I don't know. make sense and then like we'll convince all of you well you might agree with two out of the three of the things but you're in our group, you're in our group. Yeah. because <laughs> humans kind of want to get into the reds against the blues or the blacks against yeah. the whites or the yays against the nays we kind of want this binary competition thing yeah and it's weird because there's alliances that are like totally nonsensical in those totally. groups. And you're like, why are you over there with that person? You don't, yeah. you know, and you wonder how long those alliances last. Yeah. But it's all an effort to like, I think it's like a, what is it, like a dopamine hit? Is that what happens yeah. when you're like yeah. high? It's like, oh, I have a fight. <laughs> like, who am I Yes, have the fight. fight it's, yeah. We sort of evolved to fight. Yeah, and so it's like, oh, let's, Okay, and it feels, I'm, you're totally right, it okay. feels good. Yeah. Our hormones and our neurotransmitters feel good when we got a fight on like, our hands. I'm good, you're bad. Ooh, it feels good to fight you. It's like, totally I have true. to like spend all my time, and it's totally gone like bananas in the last like six years. It's like, how much can I make myself feel good with this dopamine hit like a rat? 
like getting my that's little totally hits true. off of fucking with someone else. That's totally <laughs> it's like, true. ooh, I hate you. Yep. Like, and so then your day becomes about let me go on like the news and go on the feeds and see who I can be mad at today. <laughs> <laughs> who are you I fuck need to with? feel good. Let's go find someone to hate. Yeah, I'll get I'll get a little adrenaline charge. And I'll get into like that's online totally fights. True. That's and totally I'll true. like fuck with people on TikTok. Yeah. And, you know, or whatever newspaper <laughs> that's CNN. Totally true. But and, but then hold on, I gotta point out the irony. That's totally true. But then there's this these um, kind of po- socio-political ide- ideologies that are like about tolerance, and 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 there should be kind of we would hope that humans are evolving to higher levels, and there should be an evolutionary level where it's like, and I and as certain people, it's kind of like a. a uh, liberal um, tolerance, um, em- like embracing diverse opinions. Even the word liberal, what the word liberal traditionally meant is like openness to new ideas or openness to change or openness to difference. That's kind of like what re- liberal originally meant. So the idea is that there should be this tolerance to like, oh, this person has this different idea or this person dresses in a different way or this person has a different skin color or this person, whatever, has a different sexual or this, but whatever. There's like the li- like what liberal, the philosophical liberal ideas, like openness to that. But paradoxically, um, the liberal has now just become back to the binary of liberal conservative, uh, blue red, uh, vaxer anti vaxer, masker anti masker, and then like there's the hatred there. They, ha- they haven't really stepped up to the, the the ideological idea of tolerance. The weird thing is on the internet, there's this like super conflictual, hate-filled thing. But if you actually saw them in real life in a person, like it, the energy shifts. Right, because then you'd have to address them as a human, the full human that they are, right? right? And the complexity that they are. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, that's true. The internet gives us this like, this like, um, ma- this like mask where we can like punch people, like our re- our really primal, hate-filled animal parts can really come out on the internet and we can really fully be hateful on the internet. Whereas here, look at, everyone's here around, it seems, it's actually kind of has this beautiful, like utopian paradise kind of vibe right here. Yeah. And then we go home and we get on Twitter and it's like, fuck you, no fuck you, you're a horrible person. When you're standing like in this, these like huge pillars and the giant statue of Lincoln and these huge expanses, you can't help but kind of your your um, feelings and your energy and your ideas can't help but go to the, like the lofty ideals of like America or like the founding fathers or the American dream and what had we intended to do. And in the context of what we're talking about, um, it's sort of like, well, how do we live up to this, to these lofty ideals? Or if we, if we assume that America is a, 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 a historical project, if it's a grand or a great historical project, and a lot of people would say it's not. But if we if we attempt to like move in the direction of these lofty ideals. Um, like, what does America need to do? And my, my thought, and again, when we're out here and there's all these people milling around, my sense is that, like, when people come together and they actually, like, interact with each other, um, there is a sense of, like, I think there's something about the communion of people. And if, if America is a place where different people come together, the more we interact with each other, the more we're exposed with each other, the more we actually, like, get to know each other, um... I think we overcome like our, this shadow projection thing I was talking about or seeing someone that is, has a different idea or a different skin color looks different and the closer we get to them and the more we get to know them, it, it's hard to do and as we do it, we, we're struggling, we're fighting when we're like getting closer but that ultimately like, um, and there and there's sparks, it's like coming together, it's like sparks that are created, bad and good and, and, and new things are created and that ideally like, new possibilities are created. Yeah. I think the thing that you need that, you know, that is needed in order to get to that place, because otherwise you're just creating sparks and yelling at each other, is that it requires one to listen intently into what's being said. Right. To not just 
take that moment of a thought that annoyed you or, you know, triggered you in whatever way. Take your step back, listen to it fully, listen to it again, do some other talking and some convening with some other people, and then come back and have that conversation, right? Because I think that's what's missing in our current context of the way that we're dealing with each other, especially if we've talked over the last hour or so about you know, how we get into our echo chambers or the internet or momentary blips or clips of things that we see on TikTok or Twitter or YouTube is say, what is that person really saying? What might that mean? Uh, you know, what other impacts might that have? And really sit with it and then come back with an open yeah. mind and understanding that you might, we may never actually agree with each other on this, but that's, that's not inherently problematic and that may be okay. Well, and it's actually disagreeing is good. And this thing that, that I see a lot when I'm working in uh, family therapy or couples therapy is people will be disagreeing. And usually each person has some truth or there's something important. There's kernels of truth um, or at least uh, understandable personal experiences. And if everyone, ideally the goal of couples therapy or family is for everyone to see everyone else's kernel of truth. And I think that's just true for all, but like every human has truth. They have their true human experience and that we all need to try to find any, whenever we hear anyone, whoever it is, whether it's Trump or whether it's Biden or whether it's this person or it's that person, there's some truth in there. And if we can instead, instead of seeing them as the enemy that we want to hate and get a dopamine rush by like bringing them down, if we can try to like put that aside and like try to find what's the truth in there, what's their true human experience and try to appreciate that. And then if that person can do it to me and if we can do that, I, I sort of think that's like a beautiful coming together and a mutual knowing that can and kind of live up to these lofty ideals yeah. of our country. Yeah. And then accept non, non-finality, right? Nothing, what do you mean? Because there's this idea that I'll get to that place, we'll all be like, oh. but that's not true. No. It's okay. Yeah. Not that it doesn't end. It no. keeps going yeah. and that's okay, totally. right? Yeah. So this idea that you're gonna get a closure, you're just gonna wrap up with a little like, oh, bow, yeah. like this talk, it may end nicely, <laughs> but it doesn't end the conversation, right? It's just like, totally. it's always evolving and, and that's okay. Yeah. The conversation continues, yeah. right? Uh, humans and life and everything is a constant process of movement and change. Yeah. Right. So we'll see you next week. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. <laughs> same bad time, same bad channel. All right. Same Good. conversation.